Welcome to Last Second Medicine channel. In this video, we are going to talk about idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, which is also known as cryptogenic fibrosing alveolitis. This video will be a rapid overview of this topic. Like you know from the other video about diffuse pharyngeal lung diseases on this channel, the link of which is given in the description below, and you can also click on the right upper corner for the link. That idiopathic interstitial pneumonias represent a major subgroup of diffuse parenchymal lung diseases that are grouped together as a result of their unknown etiology. They are often distinguished by the predominant histological pattern on tissue biopsy. Hence, they are frequently referred to by their pathological description. Idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis is a very common disease in this idiopathic interstitial pneumonias. Idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis is a progressive fibrosing interstitial pneumonia of unknown cause, occurring mainly in adults and is associated with the histological or radiological pattern of usual interstitial pneumonia. It has a strong association with cigarette smoking. As the name indicates that it is an idiopathic disease, but the histological features of the condition are suggestive of repeated episodes of focal damage to the alveolar epithelium consistent with autoimmune process. But the etiology remains elusive. The speculation has included exposure to viruses, for example, Epstein-Barr virus, occupational dusts like metal or wood, and exposure to drugs like antidepressants or chronic gastroesophageal reflux disease. Familial cases are rare, but genetic factors that control the inflammatory and fibrotic response are likely to be important. As already mentioned, there is strong association with cigarette smoking. And cigarette smoking is also important because once the patient is diagnosed with interstitial pulmonary fibrosis, cigarette smoking poses a risk for development of lung cancer. This disease presents in older individuals, usually more than 50 years of age. And the main presentation is dry cough, progressive shortness of breath, sometimes malaise, weight loss, and arthralgias. Signs of this disease include cyanosis and clubbing in advanced diseases. And on auscultation of the lungs, there are fine and inspiratory basal crepitations, likened to the unfastening of Velcro. Mainly the radiological investigations are helpful in the diagnosis of the disease, but other investigations are helpful in determination the severity of the disease and determining the prognosis. In lab investigations, CRP is raised, immunoglobulins are usually also raised. APGs in moderate or severe disease will show low partial pressure of oxygen and in advanced diseases there may be retention of carbon dioxide as well. ANA is positive in 30% of patients. Rheumatoid factors can be seen in 10% of patients and anti-CCP2 antibodies may also be weakly positive. The serological testing for these antibodies may be repeated as lung disease may precede the appearance of connective tissue disease. Chest radiographs are only helpful in established interstitial pulmonary fibrosis and it will be apparent on chest x-ray as bilateral, lower lobe and subpleural reticular shadowing. The chest x-ray may be normal in individuals with early or limited disease. However, high resolution CT scan is a preferred modality of investigation in early diagnosis of the disease. The patterns seen on the imaging include reduced rung volumes. Reticular shadowing can be seen in both lower lobes and is predominantly peripheral and subpleural. In more advanced diseases, the presence of honeycomb cyst and traction bronchitis can be seen. All these features can be seen in different combinations. When these features are present on high resolution CT scan, it has a high positive predictive value for the diagnosis of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis and recourse to the biopsy is seldom necessary. You can see the reticular pattern in bilateral basal lobes. 
there is sub plural ground glass appearance here you can see the traction bronchitis sub plural ground glass appearance and here you can see the typical honeycombing in advanced disease on spirometry there is a typical feature of restrictive lung defect and reduced lung volumes reduced lung volume can be seen as reduced total lung capacity and restrictive lung defect can be seen as reduction in forced vital capacity forced expiratory volume in 1 second may be normal or reduced and the ratio of fev1 to fvc is usually normal or increased and there is impaired gas transfer that is dlco is reduced bronchoscopy is seldom indicated unless there is a serious consideration of differential diagnosis of infection or a malignant process on bronchoalveolar lavage the differential cell count is important it indicates the alveolitis activity and if lymphocytes are predominant it indicate good response and prognosis of the disease while if the neutrophils or eosinophils are in larger quantity then these show the poor response and poor prognosis lung biopsy is usually not necessary but can be considered in cases of diagnostic uncertainty or disease with atypical features if lung biopsy is indicated the tissue samples obtained by transbronchial lung biopsy are invariably insufficient to be of value and if tissue is required a surgical lung biopsy should be sought usual interstitial pneumonia is the histological pattern predominantly encountered in idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis however this pattern can also be found in asbestosis hypersensitivity pneumonitis connective tissue diseases and drug reactions and these diseases can be differentiated from idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis on the basis of history and examination once you come across the patient with dry cough and progressed shortness of breath with features of pulmonary fibrosis on x-ray or radiographs the differential diagnosis that needs to be considered include occupational lung diseases like asbestosis use of medications like nitrofurantoin busulfone amiodarone and sulfasalazine and connective tissue diseases like SLE polymyositis dermatomyositis and rheumatoid arthritis complication of the disease include respiratory failure initially it can be type 1 and in the advanced diseases type 2 respiratory failure develops other complications include pulmonary hypertension development of cor pulmonale that is right sided heart failure secondary to idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis and development of ca lung especially in those patients who continues to smoke the management options of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis are improving if the vital capacity is between 50% and 80% predicted patient may be offered either perfenidone which is an antifibrotic agent or nintedanib which is a tyrosine kinase inhibitor both of these agents have been shown to reduce the rate of decline in lung function patients taking perfenidone should be advised to avoid direct exposure to sunlight and use photoprotective clothing and high protection sunscreens nintedanib may be accompanied by diarrhea neither drug improves cough or breathlessness and treatment should be discontinued if lung function declines by more than 10% over the first year of treatment medication to control gastroesophageal reflux may improve the cough patients should be encouraged to exercise and participate in pulmonary rehabilitation using ambulatory oxygen if appropriate current smokers should be apprised of the increased risk of lung cancer and advised to stop smoking influenza and pneumococcal vaccination should be recommended domiciliary oxygen which is also known as long term oxygen therapy or ltot should be considered for palliation of breathlessness in severe cases and where appropriate lung transplantation should be considered the optimum treatment for acute exacerbations is unknown treatment is largely supportive 
broad spectrum antibiotics may be combined with glucocorticoids and sometimes additional immunosuppression but there are few data to support this approach i hope you liked this video if so please share your comments about this topic in the comments below share this video with your colleagues and consider subscribing to this channel